Today we're exploring Hollywood Forever Cemetery, where we'll find such stars as Judy Garland, Norma Talmadge, Clifton Webb, and many more. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 haunted areas in Hollywood. It probably comes as no surprise that the capital of filmmaking in America boasts several haunted movie theaters. One of them TCL Chinese theaters, perhaps one of the most easily recognized landmarks in the world. A supernatural shadow hanging overhead. The shadow being cast by none other than one of Los Angeles' greatest landmarks, the Hollywood sign. It was Ciro's nightclub. Yeah, there's definitely some mojo there. For this list, we'll be looking at the spookiest places in Tinseltown. Have you been to any of these spots? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Silent Movie Theater. Los Angeles, February 1942. A movie aficionado named John Hampton opens the doors to his lifelong passion project. Located on Fairfax Avenue, the silent movie theater was the last place to see silent films in America. It was opened in 1942 by John Hampton, closed in the 70s, and reopened again in 1991 under the ownership of Lawrence Austin. For the next six years, the theater continues to run according to Hampton's original vision. Sadly, however, Austin was murdered in the lobby of his own theater one night in 1997. His business partner had hired a hitman to kill him in the hopes of getting an inheritance. It's said that Austin's ghost haunts the theater's lobby to this day, and that the upper floor is haunted by the theater's original owner. And all of a sudden, the air got colder and thicker, and I felt what could be described as a hand running across my neck. Number nine, the comedy store, Ciro's. Do you know what? A couple of my friends at the comedy store have claimed to have seen ghosts. 8433 West Sunset Boulevard is now home to the Comedy Store, but back in the 1940s, it housed Ciro's, a popular Hollywood club that acted as a playground for the era's rich and famous. It also had mob connections, and you can reportedly still see a hole in the staircase that was made to fit a gun's barrel for shooting people using the stairs. Due to its storied history, there's no surprise that there have been stories of hauntings over the years, from ghostly piano playing to objects moving by themselves. So we both saw the exact same thing in the same day. Today, ghost tours are even offered in the club's basement. I know that you at times have hosted a haunted tour around mm -hmm. the comedy store. What do you think? Do you think it's haunted? Do you feel something? Oh, yeah. Number eight, the Ghostbusters house. <laughs> Located at 7708 Woodrow Wilson Drive is a relatively modest house, by Hollywood standards at least, that has an interesting history in the film business. Actor Dan Aykroyd was staying in this very house when he came up with the idea for his blockbuster film Ghostbusters, which he went on to co-write with Harold Ramis. Although he did not believe in the afterlife, he did mm -hmm. uh, have a great sense of uh, who the operators were in spiritualism at the turn of the century. The reason he had the idea to write a script about ghosts? Apparently, the house is extremely haunted. We spent, I think, two and a half weeks around the July 4th weekend and basically hammered out this new draft of the In script. my basement. Former residents of the home include actress Natalie Wood and Mama Cass Elliot, both of whom could be haunting it. Number seven, the Hollywood sign. One thing is still firmly a part of and connected to the sign, Peg Ant Whistle. In September of 1932, the body of a young woman was found in the ravine under the famed Hollywood sign. It was later identified as being that of Peg Entwistle, a young actress who had taken her own life by jumping from the oversized H in the sign. Though Entwistle was not a well-established star in her lifetime, her story lives on because of her tragic demise. In a particularly cruel twist of irony, she was sent a letter from the Hollywood Playhouse a few days later, offering her a major role in a play to this day, there are reports of sightings of her ghost around the sign, and some even say they've gotten a whiff of the gardenia-scented perfume she once wore. She walked effortlessly up the hill. Her footsteps made no sound. Number six, the Warner Pacific Theater. There's an old saying that says every good theater has a ghost. Sam, Harry, Albert, and Jack L. Warner made up the Warner Brothers, who revolutionized the film industry with their confidence in sound pictures in the 1920s. 
They opened the Warner Pacific Theater, and according to Encyclopedia Britannica, it was the first Hollywood theater built for sound. It was said that when he realized that the theater was not going to be ready for the opening, he stood in the lobby and cursed the place. Unfortunately, the night before the premiere of the first feature-length talking picture, The Jazz Singer, Sam died. In the years following his death, security guards and other visitors to the theater claimed to have seen his ghost wandering around the old building and even operating the elevator. Since that night in April 1928, random sightings of Sam Warner have taken place at the theater and in the administration offices above. Number 5. The Knickerbocker Hotel Behind me is the Knickerbocker Hotel, which opened in 1925. It's got a lot of Hollywood history and some really scandalous, tragic history as well, which is my favorite. Though today it exists out of the limelight as an old age home, in its heyday, the Hollywood Knickerbocker Hotel was one of the hottest spots in town. Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio frequented the hotel bar, and Elvis famously stayed there while shooting Love Me Tender. There were also a couple of strange happenings which have led to the belief that it's haunted. In fact, they say Marilyn Monroe haunts the ladies' room at that restaurant <laughs> as well. Harry Houdini's widow held seances on top of the roof to try to summon his spirit for 10 years after he died. D.W. Griffith collapsed in the lobby and sued after died, and costume designer Irene Lentz took her own life from jumping out of an upper floor window. D.W. Griffith, the, the, the uh, director, died in the lobby. He was living here on the 10th floor, and he collapsed under the chandelier of the lobby. Number 4. Groman's Chinese Theater There are two different ghosts connected to the building, one of which only came to its Hollywood Boulevard haunt in recent times, and the other has been here much longer. Groman's Chinese Theater is perhaps one of Hollywood's most recognizable landmarks, but it's also totally haunted. Killian has never given up his pursuit of the man who killed him. Local lore has it that his ghost still walks the route from the Chinese Theater to his apartment, perhaps hoping that his murderer will return to the scene. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, when Sid Groman designed the theater, he had private rooms built for the stars to retreat to after a show. To get into these rooms, you pressed a buzzer in the lobby before a panel door opened. While the rooms were sealed off and the buzzers disconnected many years ago, there have been reports of people in the theater hearing that telltale buzzing sound years later. The stories have it that a ghostly little girl named Annabelle roams the backstage area of the theater, tugging on curtains and appearing to startle staff members. There are also rumors that the theater is haunted by a ghost named Fritz, who is allegedly a former employee who took his own life behind the big screen. Number 3. The Hollywood Forever Cemetery Hollywood Forever was founded in 1899 as Hollywood Cemetery. The Hollywood Forever Cemetery acts as the resting place for some of the entertainment industry's biggest stars, including Judy Garland, Johnny Ramone, Marion Davies, Burt Reynolds, Cecil B. DeMille, Douglas Fairbanks, and Rudolph Valentino. The mausoleum has undergone many expansions over the years, allowing for more and more entombments. So it's no surprise that many people have experienced spectral events on the grounds. Rudolph Valentino supposedly spooked some security guards when his spirit was seen in the cemetery, and those in the know say that there are at least three ghosts who have taken up residence there. They poured millions into restoring the cemetery, and so began its renaissance, becoming one of the most culturally and historically significant sites in Hollywood. Number two, the Pantages Theater. We have about seven ghosts that uh, sort of are active in the building. I, I think the most famous one that people know about is Howard Hughes. The Pantages Theater was once owned by Howard Hughes, who was known for putting in long hours and prioritizing work above all else. His office was on the second floor of the theater and actually connected to one of the balconies, giving him a place to pop out and see what was going on on stage. Other spirits who call Pantages home include the dog who barks down the pipelines, the little girl who sings in the hallways, and the lady who takes center stage. In 2000, when the theater was being restored, several people reported that a man appeared who seemed to be observing the construction workers, but vanished as soon as someone addressed him. Even after all these years, it looks like Hughes still has to make sure everything's done to his exacting standards. The building sort of lives and breathes, and these, these people, I think, chose to stay here beyond their sort of mortal lives. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Vogue Theatre. The site used to house a school where a fire killed 25 students. It was January 1938 when the Vogue Theatre opened its doors to large crowds. The opening feature was the romance Hitting a New High, starring Lily Pons and Jack Oakey. Both the interior and exterior of the Vogue were decorated in the then-popular Art Deco motif. The Phantom Stage 
this stage was used to film the Phantom of the Opera. Here we are in one of the most historic locations at Universal Studios. It's stage 28, otherwise known as the Phantom Stage. It was originally constructed in 1924 for Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera. The Hollywood Reporter, LA Weekly Offices. William Billy Wilkerson is said to walk the halls. The Santa Monica Pier Carousel. A ghost has been seen riding the carousel. The Avalon. People still claim to hear a jazz pianist playing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Roosevelt Hotel It's impossible to miss, right on Hollywood Boulevard along the Hollywood Walk of Fame the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. The Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is the oldest continually operating hotel in Los Angeles, opening in 1927. For 90 years, a hangout for the Hollywood elite. One of its most famous guests was Marilyn Monroe, who stayed there often during her career. In fact, she even bought a full-length mirror to have installed in her room. Many years after her death, the mirror was put up in the hotel lobby, where guests reported seeing the starlet when they looked at their own reflection. She's not the only former star haunting this building. People have also spotted the ghost of actor Montgomery Clift, who stayed there while filming one of his movies. One thing's for sure, the Roosevelt has cemented its place in Hollywood history. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.